ultimately now where we're going with this is what I want to do is to determine the flow coming out of my sprinkler ball by considering some spherical surface containing my sprinkler ball. And what I want to do is to relate the amount of flow being pumped in through the hose to the velocities on the outer edges of this spherical surface. And when I make that relationship, I'll be able to solve for the velocity at any distance r away from the point source. And then I'll be able to see whether it lines up with the electric field. But for me to be able to equate the flow into the sprinkler ball to the flow coming out of any spherical surface, I'm going to have to add up the flows across all of the tiny patches that make up the spherical surface. So my first step then is to simply understand the flow across a surface patch. And that's then where um, our analysis is going to begin. So flow across a surface patch. So what we're going to imagine is I've got some patch of surface. I will denote it here by this little rectangular patch here like this. And I have a velocity of fluid flowing through this thing. Let me sketch my velocity vector v here. That will specify the velocity of my flow. My area element, my little patch here, is going to have a certain amount of area, which I will call delta A. That refers to the area of my little patch here. But a patch always has a certain orientation, right? I could have oriented this thing vertically or horizontally as I have or at some skewed angle. We need a way of measuring the direction of the surface. And the standard way in vector calculus to uh, represent the direction of a surface is to give a representation of the normal vector to the surface. So I will sketch a little normal vector, which I will call here n hat. And generally speaking, what we do is we combine the information of the area of our patch with the direction of our patch by multiplying those two things together to define an area vector for the patch, which is usually called delta A vector. So now I have a complete specification for the situation I'm, I'm thinking about. I've got the orientation and size of my patch. I've got the fluid velocity. My job now is to figure out the current or the flow across this patch, which I will call I sub delta A. And the very definition of that flow, recall, is the mass that flows across the patch, delta M, divided by the amount of time it takes to flow, delta T. So what we have to do then is to try to figure out how much mass is actually going to flow through this surface as it flows with that velocity v in a given time delta t. So if we think about this just a, a little moment, what we will notice is that if I think, for instance, about the fluid that comes through the center point of my surface, in a time delta t, that fluid actually started out a little bit further back, right? It started out right about maybe um, down here at this particular location. So if I make this vector, and I will call that V delta T, I know, oh, uh, V delta T, I know that in that little time interval, the little piece of fluid that was here is actually destined to get just barely to the surface of my patch. And everything further along on this vector that I've drawn actually will make it across the patch in that time delta t. So now, if I want to find out the total flow through here, I have to find all the little pieces of fluid that would come through all the various different uh, corners and locations of my patch. So this corner would back up down to about there, this one to here, um, this one gets to about there, this one can get to about here, right? And you can see I can connect the bases of all of these vectors. These are all the vectors that in time delta t just barely make it uh, across my little patch. 
And as I sketch out this diagram, I don't want to make it too messy, but you can see I could put in more little vectors. And they, they're going to end up filling in this parallelopiped. So it's the entire mass that exists in this little parallelopiped that's going to be pushed through my surface in time delta t because each piece moves a vector v delta t in my time interval. So if I can figure out the volume of my parallelopiped, then I'm pretty much done because I know how to calculate the, uh, the mass that goes through there. It's my density, which we called rho naught, times the volume, which I will call delta capital V. I don't want to confuse that with my velocity vector, so I will write that as a large V. And I like to make it like the Romans would, just to emphasize that it's capital with two little you know, bars there on top. OK, so calculating the volume will be the last necessary step. So the volume of a parallelopiped, you will recall, is the area of the base down here. So, and that is delta A, that's something we already know, times the height of my parallelopiped. So the height, remember I have to drop a perpendicular. This distance is the height. And that height, now we're going to have to do a little bit of trigonometry. But the height, notice, if I think about my right triangle here, the length of this side, the hypotenuse, it has a length of the magnitude of the velocity times delta t. And what I have to multiply that by is going to be the cosine of this angle here. I'll call this angle theta. So the height is magnitude of v delta t times the cosine of theta. Now there's a reason why I chose this angle theta, which is the angle between the vertical direction and my velocity. If I think about that angle, here I'll, I'll uh, draw the same corresponding angle over here. There's the vertical direction. This is angle theta, so I can get the height of my parallelopiped. Um, that angle theta, you see, is connected through this intersection that's equal to this angle theta, which is the angle between the normal direction and the velocity vector. So now I think we're ready to, um, we can specify that that theta is the angle between the velocity, and now I've related it to the other quantity I was given, my normal vector. So at this point, we're ready to put this all together, I believe. So the current then, going through that patch, delta A, is going to equal the uh, change in mass, which is rho delta, uh, and then it's got a numerator and denominator. The denominator was just delta T, right? And the numerator was the delta M, which was rho naught times the volume. The volume was delta A times H, so that will be delta A. H itself is the magnitude of the velocity vector times the time interval delta t times the cosine of theta. And now we notice several interesting things. First, the uh, time intervals cancel. That's very nice. And what I have here, this is interesting. I've got the magnitude of v times cosine theta. This is starting to sound like a dot product. Um, I've got delta A, but notice delta A, the area of the patch, right, is just the magnitude of this vector we'd like to call delta A vector. So let me denote that. That's the magnitude of delta A. And the other thing to notice is that the direction, this cosine is the direction of the angle, is the angle between the velocity and the normal vector. That's also the same thing as the angle, of course, between the velocity and the area vector, because the area vector is in the direction of the normal vector. So what I actually have here is precisely the definition of the vector dot product. So this is the uh, density rho naught times then the velocity vector dotted with my area vector. And that then gives me the flow through the particular patch. And that is a key central result. So I'm going to put a, a box around that.
Now there's another slightly different way of writing this, which is also uh, uh, very uh, useful. We frequently also will write this by combining rho naught and v into a single vector that defines the amount of flow we have across the surface. I'll call this j. And that vector is defined to be the current per unit area. Because as you can see, when I take j times a, I get current. So j should just be the current per unit area. We call this the current density because it's on a per area basis. And it measures then the uh, current that's flowing per unit area. That's the magnitude of it. And the direction of J just gives me the uh, direction of the velocity. It tells me the direction of the flow. So we have this nice new quantity J to think about and use. And the final thing to keep in mind then is that if I want to find the uh, flow across the patch, I can write it simply then as J dot delta A with the added advantage then that I can determine J quite simply as the um, density times the local velocity field. And that's another way of getting at the flow across the surface, which we will make use of, particularly also when we get to circuits.